for everybody. Sorry about that, everybody. Can you see the group okay? <clears throat> everybody there? Okay. You're, you're all sit, sitting spread out, kind of. I see. Yeah. It's true. I see Dana on the left edge, and I can't see Adam. Oh, sorry. I'm sitting Better. close enough to touch the computer, but they <laughs> can't see me. <laughs> it's strategic. Okay. Are we expecting anybody else? No, I thought Judy Vincent was going to jump on, but. Yeah, she was. I think it's a Tom Maraconda can't make it today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, give us a hand start. Well, I uh, I have uh, written a people with uh, things that we would like to have on the agenda. Uh, divestment, uh, we can follow up on that if there's any new news. Uh, Carbon tracker, we might talk about that. Um, and then uh, there's been a couple of other suggestions of, of topics that we may or might pursue at this time. So, uh, but uh, what would we like to start with? The best one? Okay. Audrey, I think you have some information for us. Um. Yeah, I was hoping to have have made a contact at ECCT about the DNB <laughs> the donations and bequests uh, in regards to divestment in fossil fuels. Uh, and I was hoping to have that uh, some information by this meeting and I have some information. So um, I reached out to Allison Hollow, Hollow or Hollow. She's I guess an executive assistant to the bishops, plural. And she put me in touch with uh, Teresa DuPont, who is uh, basically the executive director of DNB, the donations and bequests. And she sent me some information, which I can distribute to the group um, about this pilot program, um, which is the values investment, uh, the values investment fund. Um, and we had thought that perhaps 4% of the, of the fund was invested in fossil fuels. It turns out it's, there's only 2.4% of investments are in companies that uh, deal in fossil, fossil fuels. Um, and in the balanced fund, which is the more broad fund, 3.2% uh, is invested in companies uh, that are... Um, you know, our fossil fuel uh, related. So I said that I would love to, or we would, you know, ideally get to zero, <laughs> no percent whatsoever. And um, she suggested that we might be able, that maybe one of us could meet with the board of, that uh, is connected with the Bank of America for the investments. And uh, when they have a board meeting, and I said that sounded like a good idea. Um, and uh, the, with the goal of maybe even replacing some of the investments with uh, renewable uh, investments. So, and I and she agreed with me that that would be a beautiful thing to take the the fossil fuel um, funds out and replace it with renewable, uh, you know, some sort of investment in renewables. And uh, toot the horn about that. I think that would be a tremendous um, uh, swap. So um, I think where we go from here, um, this is a part, you know, these funds are in ESG funds, which means environmental, social, and governance related funds. Um, so it is, the church has made efforts over the years to divest from weapons, from fossil fuels, from uh, anything that's socially unconscionable. Um, and, and I think that's terrific. So I'd like to see, see the funds go to zero um, and from 2.4% to 
invested in fossil fuels to, to zero. So um, I think the next step is. Um, oh, sorry, Audrey. I was going to ask did she if she give any, any indication why, um, with, with the environmental screen on the fund, why 2.4% fossil fuel companies still made it through. That's kind of the thing that I, I'm curious about. Yeah, yeah I that's. Uh, I don't know that she knows the answer to that. It sounds to me like there's uh, a board. There's a board uh, that makes decisions along with uh, or through the Bank of America. I don't know who the board members are, but this is the group that we would be meeting. We would meet with is the board. Um, how they make decisions. I don't think that normally ESG funds uh, typically, they may take out fossil fuel, but it's not necessarily the way it happens. It's kind of counterintuitive. Um, and then there's also the belief that if you invest in fossil fuel, you have more of a stay at the table. So I'm, it's an interesting way of determining ES, ESG funds, but I, again, I don't think it's automatic, an automatic fossil fuel um, divestment. Yeah. SG funds. Yeah. She says that there are 16 companies represented bundled into this um, values fund. So there are 16 companies involved in fossil fuels. I mean, we could ask how they screen the fuel, the, the, the funds and ask, I mean, they, they, that should be in their prospectus, I think. Um, if you're advertising this as, as ESG, that they should have screening uh, standards that they use. Um, You're right. No, I, I agree. I think this is fabulous to hear all this information. Yeah, she and actually Teresa said it was terrific to get the call because I, I emailed her and that I didn't hear back from her and then um, I called and she said that this is a first step in, in going forward towards this whole topic. So I don't know that I don't know that I'm the person to, to keep it moving along. I don't know that I'm, you know, there may be somebody else that's better, better positioned and better located. I, I'm not sure where the board meets, but, um, you know, I was happy to get the ball going on this. And um, I said to Teresa that I would follow up with her um, after our discussion today. And, and um, she wants to know what is our goal. And I would imagine zero you know, zero investments in fossil fuels and it seems to be the goal. And I, I think you're right, Audrey, reinvestment in renewables, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a negative and a positive. It's always saying no to one thing and saying yes to something else. And so, um, and, that no and that no future funds be invested in fossil fuel. Um, and that's, I think the third part of it, it's also divestment, reinvestment and right. the commitment on not to reinvest at some other point. Yeah, I think if we could divest in, from fossil fuels and invest in renewables, that that's, that actually kind of makes some news to me. I think that would be something to really um, promote um, as, a, as a real positive. Um, I don't know what, if other churches, you know, other dioceses or, you know, do this around the country or who's done it. Somebody today, um, mentioned that the Congregational Church of America somehow did some big divestment in fossil fuel. And um, so they may have, it, it seems like a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, I mean the, so, the, so the Episcopal Church voted to divest and reinvest too in uh, general conventions ago. So, uh -huh. um, so um, the question is how quickly you can reinvest. Um, now that they've identified what's in fossil fuel, it's a question of taking those funds out and then reinvesting right. in renewables. And, yeah. and then making, making a conversation about it and not just doing it quietly is the other part of it. Is, is yeah, it, is it? yeah I, I think if, instead of just doing it quietly, I would make a, if, if, it, if it could happen, um, I think it's a real, something to celebrate, you know. Um, she said that $108,000 are invested in fossil fuels, that's the dollar amount. So 2.4% and that translates 108,000. That's it? Yeah. Is that in the ESG account? Is the 108,000? Yeah, that's in this, the values investment fund. Right. 
Well, yeah, that's so small because very little money that... is in the Valley's investment fund so far from our diocese. It's still brand new. Yeah, you she says it's a pilot, a pilot. A pilot. So that's in current or possible. Buddy, isn't the eco um, the in uh, isn't uh, I'm afraid they're an interreligious eco uh, justice network doing a program on divestment? You're you're muted. A, I know me. Okay, now you can hear me. Sorry. Um, yes, June second, uh, IREJN Interreligious Eco Justice Network is holding a forum, a green forum on divestment. Um, does, do, does everybody know about that or do you want me to send out information about it? Yes. Please, that'd be great. Okay. Where is that? Okay. I, I think it's in Litchfield. No, it's been moving around. Um, um, I know it's on June 2nd. Um, and it it might be or it might be at the the unitarian church in hartford which would of course be a little bit closer for people yeah. um i will send i will find and send the the information i can actually look it up now cuz it will be on the website um i will be away at, which is why i i don't have it um as Okay, so it is June 2nd. I think it's at Emmanuel Church, Roland Axelson's church. I don't know. I'm looking for the town yes, though. Emmanuel Congregational Church, which is in Hartford. Um, it's the one, um, it, yeah, it's interesting. It doesn't have the address there. I'll send you that too. It's, it's from two to 4.30. Well, on uh, June second is a Sunday. It's at Emmanuel Congregational, which is so. This is um, in Hartford, near Asylum Ave. Near, it's on Woodlawn, I think. Um, so it's very. I've been there several times. It's very easy to get to. Um, so the keynote speaker will be Fletcher Harper, who's the executive director for Green Pay, Green Faith. And the panel session will include Brett Greenfield, who's the portfolio manager for Aris Faith-Based Fund, financial investment advisor Mike Winterfield, he's our IREJN guy, and Henry May, endowment chair, who successfully led the effort to divest at First Congregational Church. And Bill McKibben will also participate with a recorded video, especially for us. Wow. So, so this is going to be very cool. So, um, I mean... So I will I will copy this and send it out to the group. Thank you. Um, and it would be great to have more people. Definitely. Um, I'll I'll in, I'll include the link because they want it. The event is free, but they want RSVPs just so that you know all of the host places provide snacks and food and everything. You know they need to know whether to provide food for 20 or food for 60 or food for 100. <laughs> yeah. So to, to go back I will try to, to go. Oh, sorry. I think there's a delay on our end. Um, I was going to say, to go back to uh, Audrey's question about, you know, having someone meet with DNV. Uh, Judy, I'm wondering if that's something you might be willing to do, given your church's experience with divestment and having these conversations. Hello. Oh, can you hey. hear me? Okay. Yep. Can I just unmute myself yep. correctly? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm having to multitask here because <laughs> so I'm, I'm, um, I repeat the question for me, please. I was, I was wondering, Audrey was saying um, that one person would be, or Teresa was saying one person should go and mm -hmm. talk with the DNB board. Um, and given that this is something your church has just gone through, I don't know if that would be something you'd be interested in doing. Um, if so, you're asking me to to meet with the the board of the 
donations yes, and bequests. Yes, it's something I'd be I'd be interested in doing. If you could send me the particulars about the time and place and whatnot, sure. Yeah, we'd get that from Teresa, or we, I'd get her in touch with you, or you know, directly. Yeah. Okay. I I uh, I just need to to check exa on exact. I don't know what the time frame is for this, but I do need to check on um, what exactly what state what state where I know the the request has been made of our um, investment people and they were following through on it but whether it's actually been you know finalized yet I don't know so I would need to you know just get some more information about sort of where things stand but it's you know it's, it's definitely in the you know it definitely in, in progress and it may have, may have been completed by now Well, I'm happy to get you in touch, you know, connected with uh, Teresa DuPont um, from the DNB because she seems to have, you know, this is her, this is her purview. Mm hmm Okay. It sounds like she's been helpful all along. That's good. She yes. seems to be really very, supportive. Very, very nice woman. So, so that's my report. I, I feel like it's very, it's a positive step forward. That's the the feeling I've got about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Do we? Are we? Yes. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, and, and You're welcome. Uh, our convention guru. I mean, how are? What's happening in terms of resolutions? And is that still on? Like, I mean, these all seem like necessary steps. So yeah. maybe we have to wait on that till we know exactly what to ask for. I just didn't know what. Uh, yeah, I mean, it may be that a resolution at convention isn't even necessary. If, if we're able to work this out with D&B and, and do something, have a public conversation on it, you know, uh, a resolution may be overkill. Um, so I think we kind of have to see what comes in the conversation. Um, I'm not sure, based on, on past experience, um, uh, last time we met, we looked at the material that uh, Greg Farr at the diocese provided for us, uh, going back to the 1970s and divestment efforts and efforts to tell donations requests what to do with the money. Um, and they were not highly successful. Uh, things that looked like should have been um, easy things uh, either didn't happen or took several years to actually fall into place. Even things like divestment from um, apartheid, uh, uh, or was it weapons? It was one of those like this should have not been a difficult thing to do. Um, still took a couple years to actually happen because donations of requests seem to be uh, jumping to to follow through with it. So, um, so I think we kind of Adam, you've, you've been breaking up. You're breaking up. So, yeah, we we haven't been, we didn't. Get all that. It was you're breaking up through that last um, part. Sorry, I, I, it appears that we're having a connection problem here at our church. But um, yeah, so we'll. I think we'll see uh, if we need to have a resolution. The deadline for resolutions is at the beginning of September, so we have the summer to kind of sort it out. Um, we also have the choice to submit a question for conversation if we think that's a more fruitful route rather than a resolution. If our goal is to have churches engage with conversations around this that might produce more results than uh, pass a resolution and it never gets touched again, sort of. Mm. I really like the idea of a question about the investment because I think if we don't bring it up at diocesan convention in some form, um, yeah. people won't know it's either happening or we won't be able to engage at the parish level. So I, I know we don't like to submit resolutions just for the sake of resolutions, but I love the idea of it being a question um, that people can wrestle with in their own communities. And, um, and that format was so great last year. So I, 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 I'm excited about that possibility. And maybe this group can do a little you know, research on sharing information in advance of that. That's really exciting. If that's cool. what I heard you say, um, I kind of heard every other word. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm reading that, in between the words, not the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Stephanie, that's I heard that right. too. And like my two cents would be, that's really exciting to me because I think if I'm remembering the relationship between DNB and Mission Council, that kind of thing, that a resolution wouldn't be 
like in a, a directive anyway, it would at most be a, um, an awareness raiser. So the question just makes a ton of sense. We're going to do questions again this year. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Well, do we want to move on to uh, carbon tracking, or is there more more to discuss about uh, the best? Well, okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, I know that uh, a number of people in New London have been trying out the carbon <laughs> tracker, and I've been Adam and I have been trying it, and. Uh, Perhaps there are others that I don't know about, uh, but I, I'm. Uh, my feeling is that that I'm not finding out and out bugs in the carbon tracker at this point. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has, but the, it's more my feedback at this point to to the team with uh, or creating it would be more in the terms of feature requests. Uh, for example, there's no. No really graceful way to handle a plug-in electric vehicle. Your vehicle is either a gasoline vehicle or an electric vehicle. And the, the, the only guidance on the site about that is, do you fill it with gasoline more often or do you fill it with electricity more often? Well, the answer, of course, is I plug it in every day for electricity, uh, but I only fill it with gasoline once a month, but that doesn't that doesn't really reflect the amount of gasoline that I'm using. I'm using about maybe one third to one half gasoline and the rest is electricity. Because any trip over 32 miles or so ends up using up all the electricity that my car carries around with it. There's a gasoline tank, we'll take it 600, 600 miles. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to fill it so often. So just, just little things like that, um, you know, where we might be able to get Maybe that one's not very important, but there are other places where we might be able to get more specific uh, information because there's sort of questions that are sort of very broad sometimes when you either do something or you don't do something. It's not like I've you know, done something, you've got this half implemented or something like that. I don't know how important that is, but but um, I just wanted to give them some feedback about some specific things. I've made notes at home about what they are. I think my biggest concern was, um, and I know they were going to address it, maybe they haven't been checked recently, was that they didn't have heating oil as an option for heating, oh, yeah. which is, I think, most of the houses um, in much of our state. Uh, that just, it was like natural gas or electric. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Welcome to Connecticut. Right. <laughs> that would be nice. But, <laughs> um, Judy, what has been the sense of, uh, among people at St. James about it? Um, well, I, I only caught some of what Dana and Adam were saying. They were, they're kind of broken up, but I did, I did hear um, Adam's uh, comment about the, the heating oil uh, feature not being fully available, and that, that has been an obstacle for people getting fully signed on, definitely. So, um, and, and frankly, the delay in um, Getting it started up kind of kind of zapped some people's enthusiasm. We had like 18 people who said they were they would sign up, and then it was like delayed, 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 and then by the end we had like eight people. Which you know that's I I understand why things happen, but that that was the reality. People kind of you know just lost interest. You know they sort of got excited about doing it, and then you know. <laughs> so I um, you know I, I regret that, and I think you know. It, it, it would be good to have some way to sort of rejuvenate re the level of enthusiasm and maybe, you know, if, this, if, if there could be a feature that kind of gives people uh, who've already signed on even sort of reminders about, you know, um, you know, a little email or something like that every once in a while to, to go back and, you know, check or, you know, see how you're doing, see how your group's doing, that kind of thing. Um, because it's like once you're on, unless you, you know, unless you think about it, you don't think about it, you know, right. you don't go to it. So, yeah, I um, definitely fell yeah. off the wagon. I tried to sign up and then I got, oh my gosh, and then I just got distracted. So, um, I, what's, you guys what's the, um, is, in, in terms of nationally, is, are there like next steps that are happening? Could it be, 
re, you know, re-offered in Connecticut in some way or in the Southeast region? My understanding is they're um, working on um, mm -hmm. adding um, teachers and communities and whatnot to, to uh, launch it, it, you know, to do some sort of a nationwide launch. So they were looking for feedback, which I sent them. We had a little meeting with the people who were um, who were signed on, and they gave some they gave some good feedback, you know, good good bad, and you know, they, a lot of people were excited sort of about what they learned about their um, about their own carbon footprint and all the things that add to it. So I think that was that was real that that, that was a real uh, valuable thing for those for those folks. But there were you know they there are some of these technical <laughs> issues that really do need to be resolved. Um, cause not everybody is tech savvy, you know, so. Um, so yeah, I think they were, they're working on some sort of a fuller, uh, presentation to the, uh, you know, so that can be offered nationally. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how far along they are in that. Um, so just a, a little, so a, a related and side note. So, um, the carbon tracker came out of general convention last year and, um, and they, they the resolution act has asked for um, money from the Episcopal Church funds for um, to fund this. And so as the task force for care creation, we're actually right in the process of looking over the carbon tracker um, to talk about, um, well, to fund this project um, and then to um, see what people's experiences have been on it and then to help, or at least not to help, but at least be supportive of the idea of expanding it um, throughout the church. So it's definitely the next step. It was always sort of envisioned that way. Um, and in fact, my meeting yesterday was about <laughs> funding this project that I, they actually launched without the, the money. <laughs> um, so, um, so it's sort of a circular conversation, but I wanted to just let you know that, that um, they are working really hard on it and I, and I understand. Um, and, I, and I've heard um, some frustrations, um, Judy, and, and from others. Um, so yeah. Um, I think it's exciting, and we've we've had um, you you might have seen the Creation Care pledge that was related to this, um, and we made a big push for um, Easter Monday, and um, we've got a, a spreadsheet that I think of close to eighteen hundred people, maybe two thousand people signed up. An extraordinary number. We're looking for a thousand for Easter Sunday, um, Earth Day that week, and and, um, and now there's a little competition because some dioceses actually I won't say who. I've actually had the most sign sign up, and some of the they're going around saying, "Well, it wasn't." Um, but uh, so there's we we've organized all of those people um, by diocese, and uh, some some diocese have, have tremendous amount of sign up for the creation care pledge, and going to link it to the tracker. So there's some exciting stuff going on around the church when you think about 1,500 people signed up to email that pledge. Um, and I, and I hope we'll get some press out on that in the next while, or the church will. Do you know how many people signed up from Connecticut? I do. It's, uh, I haven't seen the list this week, so I don't want to say, but it, it was, wasn't that high. It um, was what? Uh, it wasn't very high. Um, and I, and I hadn't seen it in about two weeks. It doesn't mean that people haven't signed up more. So I don't want to say a number and then, then be proven wrong. I signed up. Actually. I did too. Um, and so, uh, so I think, you know, it's funny because some of the, I don't know, some people going back and forth about, oh, this should be a competition. Um, but anyway, so it's good news because a lot of, a, a nice number signed up for Connecticut, but, um, yeah, San Joaquin, like, knocked it out of the park, hundreds. Yeah. Um, and, um, and Washington, Olympia, I think. Um, but anyway, so it's all cool. Um, and I can, I can, if you want, I'll get some more information on, on the pledge and the, and the tracker. But I'm excited to hear that you guys are using it and that it's working and it's got some glitches in it that are going to be worked out. I think it's an amazing project. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. I'm putting it in the rollout. I'm, I'm very excited about it, too. I, I, uh, you know, I've used it and I was happy to find that I've, you know, I've done some things that should make, make a difference. Uh, but I... Uh, and, and, but there, actually, I, I uh, did get a message from, I missed the latest webinar, unfortunately, I, I couldn't, uh, I wasn't available for that, that hour, but I got an email from 
Sheila Andrews asking me whether our bishops uh, have a statement yet about in support of this. And I realized that I haven't gotten any reply to the letter I drafted uh, some months ago. Uh, so I don't know what the status of that is. And, and uh, I said to Sheila, yeah, I'll go follow up on that. Well, it's just before Easter. And she said, don't bother the bishops during Easter, <laughs> you know, that Easter. <laughs> but now that Easter is, now that we're beyond the actual day of Easter, I think I will feel free to call the diocese and try to track that down and see where that stands because technically we should have submitted that letter even before Connecticut went live on this. But, but uh, she said it didn't, that wasn't, didn't matter as long as we eventually get such a letter. So I, I will I will follow up on that. Um, I don't know if there's anything else we, we want to uh, discuss about the climate tracker right now. Uh, but uh, I, I I certainly think it's good to encourage people to try to use it so that if there are any uh, any problems that come to light, then then we can report that back to the developers and and uh, let them know, and and also you know make sort of a wish list perhaps of, of features that we would like to see enhanced or added to the to the tracker. <clears throat> well, I think Rachel, you had something. You yeah, I had a couple of things, to, and I don't know whether there's any energy in, our, in this group around either of them. One of them particularly would require some energy. Um, every time I go to an ECCP function and I am served with plastic utensils, I go a little nuts. <laughs> and so now I have a set and I can take my own and that's fine. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, is that something worth a resolution or a discussion around how can we um stop that <laughs> and even if even if it's at ECCT events you know whether it's some whether it's I think convention is usually pretty good about not mm -hmm. about using real cutlery but um you know whether it's something like the cathedral having you know our, our cathedral having Kelly Brown Douglas and you know that sort of thing where the lunches have the plastic fork with it or any of those kinds mm -hmm. of things um mm -hmm. and and so I don't, I don't know if there, I had seen, and I went online today to try to find it from Green Anglicans, a um, story about one co conference that decided to go green in there, you know, and so they, they got bought carbon offsets. They did all kinds of things to try to minimize their disposable material. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I couldn't find that. So I, I don't know beans about it, but I didn't know whether it was something that this group would like to um, look at in any way. Well, it, it, seem, it, it seems like an opportunity to raise awareness at least. Uh, and I was thinking of the, the, the events that are at diocesan facilities, whether it's the, the Commons or Camp Washington or wherever, could could probably do this most easily, but then the diocese could also encourage any parishes that host events to, to uh, use reusable uh, flatware and stuff. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, but I, I think you know, maybe something to try to phase in uh, might be harder in some situations than others. Does anybody have any experience with that or thought about that or just leave it alone or what? It's really, really hard to hear what y'all were talking about. Uh, pretty much all I picked up was something about utensils. <laughs> I'm going to try stopping our video and seeing if that helps. Sorry. Can you uh, hear us better now? Is that any good? Say something more. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was talking about was trying to promote something it's starting, as Dana is suggesting, with ECCT and ECCT functions, you, it's not working. Blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. Would it pick us up better? 
I don't know. Um, I think the problem, our Wi-Fi is acting up for some reason. So the closest, unless it gives it a better signal. Uh, any better now? Don't think no, it's any better. No. No. Um, hmm. I think the um, Wi-Fi is pulsing. The service is pulsing. They call it. Is it going to go? Oh, yeah, we have a we have a bad internet connection evidently today. I apologize for that. Uh, hold on, let me let me try calling into our call. <laughs> Give me just a second here. Rachel, I don't know. I missed a lot about what we were saying, and I'm not sure if this is what you're getting at. But I remember the Diocese of Vermont had done a, what they call the Green um, Cookbook for having green coffee hours and included all sorts of ideas for wasted from coffee hour, you know, styrofoam cups, paper, reusable utensils. Is that what you're getting at? I, I'm sorry if that's not what you were talking about. Yeah. I'm missing some of that. Daniel, I, I mean, oh, here Jeannie, she's coming again. You're talking about the green coffee hour. Oh. Oh. Uh. Is that it, or is that different? No, it was actually a cookbook. It was, it was, it, it was, uh, but it, that's a good book too. Um, what did you hold up, Rachel? That's a good one. I can't do seven. Seven simple steps to green your church. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Whoa. My, Whoa. Yeah. Okay. We tried to we tried some coffee hour um, uh, steps that, that some of them worked out, some of them didn't. But. There we go. Sorry guys. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. An echo. <laughs> That's interesting. Let me turn this off. Let me turn this off. Turn this off. Turn this off. There you go. Can you guys hear us okay now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we're we're calling in on our own meeting. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'll try to be briefer just in the interest of all this. But, um, it, just to try to find a way to at least start a discussion and, and maybe at the EPPT level for any events at the Commons or Camp Washington as possible to um, stop the use of a single use plastic. Um, just just we got to find a way around that. Um, the whole disposable world. When when I go to those events and I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I I don't know. I mean, I now to bring my own set. I finally got a set to bring with me, <laughs> and I I don't know enough about how the alternatives are and how that process would begin to really think about how do we do that. I, I'm mostly bringing it up here to see whether there's any energy or desire to look at that at the ECCC level oh. in this group. I know our focus is, is divestment, not getting too distracted from that. So I don't wanna, yeah. I think uh, right now there's a lot of momentum and interest around plastics. Uh, there's, I'm just, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions from, you know, just the public in my job about, you know, plastics in the environment, plastics in the ocean and whatnot. And I think um, now's a good time to, to um, you know, take advantage. So I would fully support that. I think people people want to, you know, get, you know, find ways to, to, do, to do it and to do it in communities even, you know, reinforces everybody's good behavior, you know. Yeah. <laughs> this is Brad. I totally agree with that, in part because I think it's something that people can really 
latch on to. I think sometimes divestment is a little abstract for parishioners. And so I think that that gives us also something very tangible and maybe would widen our base of support. Mm -hmm. Has anyone seen the movie or the documentary Plastic Ocean? I think it was called. I haven't seen it. Yeah, we, we yeah. yeah, we showed that. Um, our Caring for Creation committee showed that a um, couple of months ago with a vegetarian potluck. It's a very powerful movie. And we actually had, we had a good turnout. We had some people from the community or church members came out for it as well. So, yeah, it's <laughs> so it's 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 hard to watch. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if maybe we could do something like uh, uh, kind of help launch the conversation about ECCT events while also encouraging parishes to think about it. Yeah. You know, coffee hour, potlucks, whatever they're doing at the parish level. Um, maybe we could do that with a series of screenings of that documentary around the different, uh, around the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Do one here in the Southeast and mm -hmm. yeah. kind of roll it out that way. Does anyone have experience with using alternatives? I mean, like, what, what, you know, I guess part of it is I think, gee, it'd be nice to be able to say, you know what, you can stop using your plastic, and this is what you can do instead, and it'll be a much better thing. I mean, I know, like, real stuff, that's great. I just, I didn't know whether there were other, other things that we could think about. Yeah, there's disposable bamboo. Probably. I don't know, how, I don't know if I've used it before, but I know it exists. Um, you can get, comp, you know, uh, compostable plastic, mm -hmm. which I think is debatable about how compostable it actually is. Well, you have to compost it. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I think, you know, what happens, what I see is that people get that and then they throw it in the trash. Right. Well, well it's, most of it won't even compost in your own, like, home compost pile. Like, it requires commercial right. scale or um, yeah. municipal scale. You have to have, like, a key, you have to have a big compost so it's your compost. So, I'm not, that, I, that's available. I'm not sure if it's much better than this project. Right. Mm -hmm. You'll go for it. Plenty of years ago, we had no problem with washing larger cups, bitches, mm -hmm. and cutlery. Yep. Right. So why are we out and being so large? Mm -hmm. Can we go back in time? Yep. Yeah. I, I think we have this opportunity in coming up here to train steamers on the 29th. Mm -hmm. In conjunction with the river campaign. Right. that group that night in our whole community. Mm -hmm. And we certainly can have the green dinner hour mm -hmm. and advertise it to the people who come. Yep. Oh. Yeah, that might be an opportunity for us to explore like other alternatives to, I mean, we could certainly use the silverware there. It could be an outdoor picnic. But it might be an educational experience to say, hey, look, here are these other options that you can use instead of yeah. plastic wear. Mm -hmm. I, I think St. John's in Vernon, where Letty is and Virginia Army is the rector, has made a lot of progress on coffee hours. Um, I don't want to speak for them, but I, I'm pretty sure they've done some good work there too. So um, there may be some expertise right here in UCCT. Um, but I love the idea, Rachel, of it. At least, even if we went to, you know, recycled napkins or something at our events, or um, just one or two items, then we advertise what it's about, um, and not having water bottles or something, just having water pitchers out or something. I don't, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm not sure how to activate it, but I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's about awareness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what next steps would be, but I would, you know, be eager to talk with anybody about, you know, maybe figuring out a way to bring it. You know, when you talked about, you know, would there be discussion questions at convention that might, you know, you know, maybe that maybe that becomes part of a, you know, how do we, you know, green our churches or what is the responsibility for the church toward creation or, you know, right. something that might include divestment as well as the plastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we handle water at the convention? They have pitchers. Pitchers? Yeah. yeah. And what do they serve it into? Glasses. 
It's all real. It's all real. Stuff. Usually, it's convention is pretty. Stuff. Usually, convention is pretty much real stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just all the other events, you know, the like when we do the leadership. Yeah. To, yeah. Right? I mean, we get yeah. paper plates, and we get you know, it's just like. Yeah. No, I mean the real stuff's actually cheaper on a big scale like that because the restaurant or the hotel already has it, and if you get disposable, you have to buy it all. So actually, the stuff that mentions all real stuff, and it's off napkins so they just wash it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's cheaper. Right. Right. Sometimes it's being traditional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's, that sounds like an area where we can try to uh, influence the course of things. Uh, I don't know if there's a direct next step on that, but. Uh, well, I don't know which. Let's see. We're we're northwest region, southwest region, southeast region, um, oh, south central region, and then it, one of the teachers here. That's northeast region. So that's going to be from every region. Except north central. Oh, north central, right? So you know, there's a threat. There's a connection here for potentially. You know, it, it would be interesting to find out which parishes in each region um, use real stuff at coffee hour. You know, like what do people use? Mm -hmm. um, and and maybe kind of promote that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, because I think here we use a mixture. It's real yeah. mugs, but paper plates. Right. And, and I think, are we using the actual uh, stainless steel table think it forks? It varies. Yeah. 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 I think mostly again because it gets really expensive by plastic. Yeah, part of our oh. problem here is that we don't ha we have a sanitizer but not a dishwasher per se. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. You know. It's not that we're going to change that anytime soon, but it means that somebody has to actually hand wash. Mostly wash it. Yeah. Yeah. Get yeah. stuck on it, won't get it off. Right. Right. So it has to be pre-washed, and then you can put it in the sanitizer for the final blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Should we set our next meeting time before we lose everybody? Sure. Sure. Let's do that. Yeah. Could I just throw out uh, just an FYI? Um, I don't know if this is helpful, but um, so probably in the next three or four weeks there'll be an opportunity to apply for grants um, at the, at the church uh, the task force of fair creation um and there'll be a whole different range and so start thinking if you want about what kind of grant maybe ecct would want to apply for or a couple congregations working together um they're going to be a range of uh, values for the grants and um and there's some exciting opportunities to do some creative ministry um and so I just want to encourage you to we'll come out through this new services. I'm hoping in the next three or four weeks, and there'll be a webinar about the grant application process. Is this for the national church or for the specifically CCT? Uh, no, this, this is the national church. So, so there's oh, something like yeah. three hundred fifty thousand dollars allocated from general convention to uh, to give grants to all sorts of programs around the church and this is our first round that we're releasing it might be sooner than three weeks um the grant application's almost done and um and we'll have small grants and then c grants and then impact grants and so i could see a c grant of a couple of thousand or something you know with a match or something and i just wanted to throw it out there if people have things in mind yeah they can collaborate with other churches or within ecct or something yeah and Judy, and um, I'm sorry, Stephanie. From your um, Stephanie, from your connection nationally and beyond, do you know of other dioceses that are having this plastic versus not plastic conversation? Have you heard that anywhere else? Um, well, I think I think Vermont was probably the strongest on it. They did this whole program on training, and this um, it was based on the baptismal covenant. It was a really interesting document, and I cannot find it right now. Um, and they hand it out to all the churches about how to make green coffee hours based on you know caring for creation and justice. Um, mm. And I know in Olympia they've done a lot of work on this. Um, so it's a there's a lot of conversations going on about it. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Well, we can pick that up later. I don't, I don't want to schedule something. You want to? I just want to make sure we get the next meeting yeah. on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just kind of here's what uh, this is. I'm looking at this calendar for June, and there's a second uh, Thursday is the 13th, and the third Thursday is, is the uh, 20th. Would, would either of those be good? Both of those work for me. 13th is probably marginally better than the. Okay. Okay. Same time, five to six. Yeah. Well, that would be Thursday, the thirteenth of June, from five to six p.m. Uh, here in, in the in the cloud, wherever people may be. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank you. Okay, good. All right, well, are we, uh, actually today we didn't have an opening prayer. Would anyone like to offer a closing prayer? Sure, I'll do it. The Lord be with you. And also with you. you. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day and the gift of your creation and all that you've given us to care for that creation. We thank you for this time together and pray your blessing upon conversations around divestment and plastic use and everything else that may be seeds that have been planted this day. Give us a safe home and a good rest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Yes. And thank you, everybody. Yes. Okay. Right. Have a good evening. All right. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.